All right, here we go now, baby. Welcome to another edition of Pound for Pound Picks, the UFC 298 edition of the show, proudly presented by Bet99. Make sure you check them out for all your betting needs, UFC related and otherwise. We say hello to my partner, Ro. Ro, big night of fights coming up Saturday night in Anaheim, and we are going to start things off like we always do in the main event. Alexander Volkanovsky is back to defend his featherweight title, uh, coming in as a minus 125. Favorite, he is taking on the undefeated Ilya Topuria, who comes back as a plus 105 underdog. My best bet for this fight. Give me the champion, Volkanovski, to retain here as a minus 125 favorite. And I think this is a very dramatic case of recency bias. Volkanovski, when this fight was first announced, was a minus 175 favorite. Now he's all the way down to minus 125. And I think people are holding his most recent fight against him too much here. You know that fight. He took on about a week's notice, up a weight class against a guy who many consider to be the top pound for pound fighter in the world. Yeah, it didn't go his way, but look at what he's done here at Featherweight. He's just running through everybody, uh, less than a year removed from destroying Yair Rodriguez, about a year and a half removed from uh, smacking Max Holloway pretty good. at landed him by about 70 significant strikes in that fight. And absolutely, this is a major step up in competition for Topuria who is very good, no doubt about it. But still, he hasn't defeated anyone in the top six in this weight class. And you look at how these guys match up. Volkanovski is the more effective striker. He lands more and at a higher percentage. He has a better striking differential, and he's done it all against much better competition. So I think we're getting a beautiful number on the champion here because of his most recent fight. Ro, what do you like for the main event? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I was actually leaning to Pira earlier when I uh, heard about this fight. Uh, when the fight was, uh, you know, announced, uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, Tapiria was, I think, like plus 135, plus 140. I completely misjudged the line movement. I thought money was going to come in on bulk. I thought Tapiria would be about plus 170 in this spot, uh, you know, at least plus 160. Instead, the line has gotten shorter. So, yeah, I think the uh, value is on bulk in this spot. Uh I do think there is some value if you take uh, Tapuria to win by knockout. Uh, that's plus 400 over at Bet99 right now. Because I think if he does get the win, it is going to be by knockout. Uh, Volk is coming off uh, you know, that knockout loss. Maybe he's coming back a little bit too early. Uh, we'll see about that. But as far as the matchup goes, yeah, I mean, I love Volk. I love this price for him. Uh, you know, that, that head kick from Makachev, uh, one thing to note is that uh, that was kind of a flaw in Volkanovski's stand-up uh, even before that. A lot of people were actually uh, saying that, uh, you know, Yair might catch him with a head kick. There's a lot of people kind of backing Yair to win by knockout. So the fact that it happened isn't as much of a shocker as maybe you thought at first. Uh, One thing to keep in mind is that Ilya is primarily a boxer. He doesn't throw a lot of kicks. So that head kick's not really going to be there for him. He's also really heavy on that uh, lead foot while he boxes. And I think uh, Volkanovsky's leg kicks are going to carve up that leg foot. So I think from a matchup perspective, Volk has the edge as well. Okay, next up, let's drop down to the co-main event, a fun-looking middleweight fight. Robert Whitaker coming in as a minus-225 favorite. He is taking on Paulo Costa, who's finally getting back into the octagon. He comes back as a plus-185 dog. I'm going to take Robert Whitaker, but I'm going to look to extract a a little bit better value, get a better number. I'm going to take him to win by decision, plus-135. 30. Uh, I think Paulo Costa, I think his best days are already behind him. And I do think he is a little bit of a fraud here too. When was his last impressive performance? I'll tell you. You have to go back to 2019. He won a war versus uh, Yoel Romero. Since then, he's only fought three times. Of course, he got finished by Israel Adesanya. He got outclassed by Marvin Vittori. And then, uh, I don't know, were you guys impressed by his win as a minus 400 favorite versus a completely washed up? Luke Rockhold? I was not. Um, So let's take a look at Robert Whitaker here. This is a guy who has been a bit of a decision machine here. He's gone to decision in seven of his last nine fights, including in a bunch of five-round fights. And over his last 10 years fighting fighting in this weight class, he's only lost to two men. The current champion, Dreykus Duplessis, and Israel Adesanya, of course. Um, So not a hard guy to put away. Uh, now he was put away in his most recent fight, of course, versus Dreykus Duplessis, a rough night for him in the octagon. Uh, but I take a look at the bigger sample size here, and I do think striking defense will be the difference in this fight. Uh, Whitaker is much better at avoiding 
getting hit, which is the complete opposite for Paulo Costa, who absorbs over six significant strikes per minute. Uh, so, yeah, I like Whitaker to get his hand raised and to win by decision, plus 130. Okay, Ro, we have an absolutely loaded main card here. So let's get to two more here. Uh, Henry Cejudo, uh, this could be it for him. He's taking on Mirab Divalishvili. I think I nailed that. Uh, who do you like in this fight? Uh, I like Divalishvili, to be honest. Uh, I mean, he is the favorite, uh, minus 200. Uh, but you're going to be able to get shorter odds by taking him to win by decision. Uh, that's, uh, you know, we're filming this on uh, Tuesday right now. Uh, we don't have those odds up at bet 99. Uh, but uh, they're probably going to be close to a pick em price for him to win by way of points. Uh, Zahuda looked pretty good coming out of his retirement against uh, Aljo. He did lose that one, but it was close. Uh, thing is, though, he was taken down four times in that fight. Uh, so we, we know that even with his wrestling guy, you know, that wrestling in his back pocket, you know, gold medal winner, this is a guy that can be taken down. Aljo couldn't hold him down, but Velishvili is much better with his top pressure. And I think that pressure and cardio is going to be a little bit too much for Cejudo. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, Dvalishvili is a guy that tends to win by decision. Eight of his nine wins in the UFC coming by points. So I'm taking him to win by points. And like I said, I uh, should probably see that right around that minus 110 range. Okay, next up, we have the big mouth. Ian Gary taking on uh, Jeff Neal, who will be looking to shut that mouth of, uh, of Gary. What do you like in this fight? I'm taking the over 2.5 rounds here. Uh, minus 125 at bet 99. Uh, the thing with Gary, I mean, this is a really, uh, you know, he is a good fighter, really good striking, but we've seen that, uh, you know, with a step up in competition that happens in the UFC, he's not knocking people out like he was earlier on in his career. Uh, you know, four of his uh, five last five fights have gone over 2.5 rounds, three of those fights going the distance. Then he had a really late finish against Keenan Song, who is nowhere near the level of someone like Neil. Uh, the same is true for Neil. Uh, four of Neil's last five fights have also gone over 2.5 rounds. Uh, he lost to Shavkat uh, with less than a minute left in that fight, but he was able to last pretty long against our guy in Rachmanov, who has an insane finish rate, and I personally think is much better all around than Gary. Uh, you know, Neil is a durable fighter. He's a guy that's gone against some really high-level strikers, and I think he's going to be able to go the distance here and uh, be able to get the over 2.5 rounds at close to even money's good value. Okay, let's go to the prelims for my final bet of our show here. I think a nice number, of minus 130 on Amanda Lemos to defeat Mackenzie Dern, who is taking the fight on short notice here. A woman's straw weight fight. I just don't think Dern is very good. And whenever she has even a slight step up in competition, she seems to lose. And this absolutely is a step up in competition. Lemos is a finisher. She has eight knockouts on her resume along with three submissions. And I do think she will find success with her striking in this fight. Dern is coming off uh, her first KO loss to Jessica Andrade her last time out. And two of her last five opponents have landed over 100 significant strikes against her. Uh, Lemos lands more strikes and at a higher percentage. She also has better takedown defense and accuracy. As a result of that, uh, beautiful number, I think, minus 130. Okay, bro, uh, bring it home for us. Final pick of the show. What are you looking at? I'm um, looking at the prelims. Uh, Rinya Nakamura, a guy that I am big on. Uh, I think this guy's got a really bright future. Uh, I think on the money line, he's like minus 1,100 right now. So that's a bit crazy. Uh, but once his, uh, you know, met, uh, to win in the first round uh, prop drops, I think there's going to be value there. Uh, looking at a few other books, you're getting the under 1.5 rounds at plus money at most books. So being able to take him to win in the first round should be a plus money bet as well. Uh, this is a guy that, like I said, super high ceiling, a world-class wrestling, really good boxing as well. And he's facing Carlos Vera, who I don't think is a UFC caliber fighter, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Vera is uh, 36 years old, so he's a lot older than the 28-year-old Nakamura, 11-3 and three on the regional circuit. Uh, we saw him lose to Brad Katona on uh, Tough last year. Uh, Katona's not someone I rank very highly as well. I would say he's a fringe UFC fighter. Uh, and Vera was clearly outclassed by the Katona, had his back taken multiple times, uh, was almost submitted by Katona. Uh, and now he's facing a guy in Nakamura who's, uh, you know, been a finisher pretty much his entire career. Uh, you know, while uh, road to the UFC, he was facing some guys over in Asia. First two fights in the octagon, those ended in first round finish. Uh, then he uh, made his UFC debut last February. He knocked out his opponent in 33 seconds. 
Uh, then we uh, we saw him fight last August. I backed him to win in the first round there. It didn't happen, but he did have three submission attempts. He was looking for the finish there. So he's a guy that I think is just, uh, you know, leaps and bounds better than Vera here. And I think he gets the early finish. Okay, Ro, before we go, what do you think of the new uh, combat-related artwork I got in my background there? I can't even make out what that is. I'm kind of colorblind, though, so I think that does not help with that. Oh, well, we won't judge you on that. Apollo Creed Rocky. Oh, a birthday it. gift for my lovely wife. So there we go. I wasn't planning on putting it back there, but I threw it up. And, uh, you know, I think it fills the space quite nicely. Uh, you um, know I, love, I love seeing all the Super Bowl commercials that we saw on Sunday. Uh, you know, seeing uh, seeing a uh, little, uh, little Apollo Creed shout out there was nice. It was good to see the little Carl Weathers uh, cameo there one last time, you know? Yeah, nice tribute. It was very yeah. touching. Uh, that was nice to see as well. Okay, so I say it every week. We're still waiting for that UFC 300 uh, main event. Uh, maybe next time we're talking here, we'll have that to talk about. Uh, I know tickets for that event go on sale, I think, next week. And I have to announce yeah. the main event here, right? So, uh, yeah, we will cross that bridge when we get there. But that does it for this edition Ah, pound for pound picks. Make sure you check out Bet99 for all your betting needs, including uh, the big event going down on Saturday night. Best of luck with your bets. We'll see you next time. Yeah.